Hey guys, how's it going? So in the last tutorial on BORAI, which is a GOI of Quantum Espresso, I showed you guys how to run a SEF calculation. Now in this tutorial, um, I'm going to show you guys how to run a band calculation. So basically we will be, you know, calculating the band structure of silicon. So in order to do that, um, just go ahead and click on bands right here. And by the way, I'm working on the same project that we, you know, I was working in the last tutorial. So in case you guys, you know, skipped it, you might want to watch it. Or, you know, if you can keep up with me, then you can watch this one also. So coming to this band uh, tab. So here there are not a lot of options that you need to set. So basically you have the number of bands that, you know, basically tells the number of bands that you want to be calculating. So for the silicon, um, crystal structure um, what I want is I want almost uh, you know I want to calculate the same number of bands in the valence uh, band as well as the conduction band so here are a few examples of the silicon band structure on the internet so you know we'll be try to, trying to produce a graph that looks somewhat like this however there is one thing that you need to keep in mind that these plots have been produced using a two atom silicon crystal however we are working with an eight atom crystal so there will be more bands uh, in our system so as you can see here they had like four bands in the valence band and a few more in the conduction band however we are working with 32 bands and the reason is because in our case we have 16 bands in the you know balance band or the occupied levels so how do i know that information that is because if you go ahead and look at the result in the scf calculation so basically what you do is you run an scf calculation with the occupation set as fixed and you don't provide any information of the bands right here so when you run this uh, you know calculation then what you notice here is you will notice that your uh, quantum espresso will calculate the energies at each k point so as you can see at this k point it has calculated a few energies now all these uh, the number of these energies is 16 that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 times 2 that is 16 and it, it has evaluated the highest occupied level 2 so basically it has only you know worked with the uh, occupied levels and they and since there are 16 occupied levels so i know that i will you know need to go or i will have to provide an, an n band that is larger than 16 to plot the conduction band. So, you know, you can either put it as 32 or maybe to run the calculation a little faster, what you can do is you can just set it to 24. So there will be 16 um, valence bands and there will be eight conduction bands. And then you have this option of symmetry of bands that you can set to true or false. And then comes the important part that is the high symmetry points or the the path that you know you want your reliance or integrations to be done on so currently you know BRI what what it does is it you know refers to the geometry of your system so currently it is set to cubic so what it does is it automatically picks out the high symmetry points of the cubic lattice and then it you know performs the integration along those however we know that silicon is not just a cubic lattice but it is also an FCC lattice so i mean it is a diamond fcc lattice so we should probably you know if you go ahead and look at all these graphs and what you can notice is they have evaluated the band structure along the fcc uh, high symmetry points so cubic has the high symmetry points as ga gamma xm gamma rxmr however fcc has these as like um okay so there was an image right here so the high symmetry path for your FCC lattice is gamma X W K gamma L U W or something along these lines. So um, we should be you know using this now. Coming back to quantum espresso, so you want to change these, right? So currently there are two options. That is, you can either change them through the input file. So we have the good old input file, and you can perform the changes here, or you can perform the changes here. Now the question that we you know have is how to perform these changes. Now before we go ahead and do that, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, let's just go ahead and run this you know calculation with these symmetry points only. That is for the cubic lattice, and let's see what what is the result that we get. So just go ahead and click on run. Okay, so the calculation has started now. It might take a lot of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pause the video now. So, I mean, you can see that the band's uh, output file has started to be, you know, 
calculated so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause the video right here and resume when this calculation is over okay so the calculation is finally complete and if you go ahead and open the bands file then you will see that in the end it says job done and then the bands up file it also says that the job is done so basically it means that the file is complete now in case you're wondering what these two you know files really mean or what do they calculate then basically the first you know output file is from the pw.x output file so what it does is it calculates the energies you know and all that stuff had for all the band um, bands and then this this output file is basically from the bands.x so here you can see that it says that the program's name was bands while here the program's name is pwsf because this is the output file from pw.x so what this file does is, is it is an you know kind of a post processing tool and it basically just tells you the x coordinates for the high symmetry points so the gamma point you know corresponds to the x coordinate 0 then the x point corresponds to the x coordinate 0 0.5 then m then gamma again then you know xmr or something like that so basically it just gives gives you all that information and then it tells you that the plottable bands have been written to a file called espresso.band1.gnu now when you perform this calculation usually what you do have is that BRAI basically just plots all these bands and gives you a file called bands now for some reason I didn't get that when I ran this calculation and it's probably that because usually it is expected to run the DOS calculation also so I've noticed that when I run the density of states calculation then it magically appears but for some reason it did not you know uh, evaluated that currently so let me just go ahead and do that manually so the if you go to your project you know the wherever you save your project like SICF.test uh, then you will notice that there will be a file called espresso.band1.gnu so just go ahead and open it using any text editor and then um, just select all these values and plot them in any you know plotting software so in my case I'll be using origin so just uh, select all these and then plot them so here you get the band structure when you evaluated it along the cubic high symmetry points that is gamma xm gamma and all that now coming back to the you know silicon band structure now if you go to these links on the internet then you will notice that they have evaluated it at, along the high symmetry points of the FCC lattice as I already told you guys now in case you are wondering how to do that using quantum espresso then the answer is pretty basic now just listen to me very carefully now you need to understand what all this means so for SCF calculation we had K points set to automatic here so we had automatic keyword here and then we had a grid like a 8 by 8 by 8 Monkos pack grid or something like that but for the band structure you need to specify the path so that is why you have the path now since the newer quantum espresso you know it gives you the ability to instead of you know writing the complete coordinates of the gamma or the X point then instead of that what you can do is for uh, you can just you know write these short notations for all these high symmetry points so for gamma or any roman numeral you can basically just you know write the small the lowercase version i mean the letter in the lowercase and then the uppercase so basically gamma corresponds to g small g and then capital g and then x m and then gamma and r x m so for scc lattice i already told you that the high symmetry points are like w gamma x w l now the problem here is that currently quantum espresso is said to be you know considering this as a cubic lattice since i rav is equal to one and therefore it will it will not recognize the w l etc gamma point um high symmetry points that correspond to the fcc lattice so i can just go ahead and show you that real quick so if you change it to w which is a high symmetry point for the high for the FCC lattice then if you you know just go ahead and click here so that the changes reflect and now if you run this calculation then you will probably run into an error so as you can see that we our calculation crashed and if you go ahead and look at it, the reason then you will find that the letter W is not recognized so what you need to do is you need to provide the explicit points for all these so the way to do that is I mean you can just google those and you can find out the 
you know coordinates for all these points for the FCC ladder so here I have a link where all these points are mentioned in two ways that is you have the crystal coordinates as well you have the coordinates in 2 pi by a that is the reciprocal ladders so quantum espresso provides you the option to you know enter the coordinates either as in the reciprocal you know um, uh, lattice that is 2 pi by a or in the crystal uh, coordinates so uh, you can choose whichever you want it doesn't make a lot of difference because as you can see that in the crystal coordinates also you had the x point as 0 half half and then in the 2 pi by a in terms of 2 pi by a you will have these as like 0 1 0 so there's in not a lot of difference and similarly in l you will have like 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then you will have half 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 of 2 pi by a all here all so that's you know how you will be providing the coordinates to perform a band structure calculation so that you get a band structure something like this so i have already you know went ahead and noted all these points in a you know in a notepad file so we'll be calculating the band structure along these six points so wg and let me just show you one more thing so basically k points tells the is in input card then 2 pi by t pip a underscore b basically means 2 pi by a you can either change it to crystal or automatic but for band structure calculation you only you know work with these two and then you can enter the coordinates either here by double clicking here and entering like zero then pressing enter and then if you reload this and you will see that the changes would have reflected here and then and this basically tells the number of high symmetry points that you are working with so currently we have like one two three four five six seven eight symmetry points that is why it is 8 and then these points that is 20 20 20 basically what these are is the I mean what quantum espresso basically does is um, when you provide two symmetry points like W and M then what it does is it you know performs the Boulogne zone integration along this path so this is basically a line these two points you know correspond to a line and then 20 that is the number after W basically tells that how many points will be on this line that will be calculated so the higher is the number of points the better is your calculation so basically uh, now I have told you pretty much everything that you needed to know and let's just go ahead and copy this and then paste all these values here and then just click here so that these changes are reflected here so now we are going to be calculating the band structure along the high symmetry points of the FCC lattice so just go ahead and click run and again I'll just probably pause the video so that it doesn't take up a lot of time well let's just wait and see for this to complete okay so the band structure calculation is finally complete as you can see here that the job is done and once again th there is some problem and um, BRI hasn't you know calculated the band structure in a graph so I will again have to go to and you know edit this notepad file and reload it and then just select all these values and go ahead and then plot them in origin so just click create a new worksheet paste these all there and just plot okay so here is the band structure and now let's you know compare it with the one on the internet so comparing it now um, just hold on a second okay so now we have this curve coming in pretty good so we have this line then this and all that and then we have this one also there so that is also good then we have this band also here so this extends from here to here and then we have one or two more similar bands here so basically you can see that the band structure is uh, band structures are pretty much same however the the reason that I have so many bands here is because I had eight atoms in the crystals so therefore there were like 16 bands in the occupied levels so therefore we have 16 here and then we have like eight bands here so in total we have 24 bands while they only have like four in the occupy level because they are using a two atom silicon crystal so they have like four bands in the occupy levels and then four or six more in the conduction 
band. So you can see that the band structures look pretty much good and I think um, they are almost similar and in case you're wondering like where do these W gamma X W points come in then you can always have a look here in the you know band startup file and you can see that the X or the what was the next word the gamma coordinate is at 0.9354 and the first coordinate is 0 so on W so this one is the W then we have the gamma coordinate at 0.9354 so somewhere here so we have the gamma coordinate here and then we have the um, X coordinate at 1.6 so 1.6 or somewhere here so we, here we have the X coordinate so comparing it with here so yes okay so this is the X coordinate now as you can see it is all coming in pretty good that is exactly where it should have been so I would you know call it a good graph and in case you have any doubts or questions then leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you and that's it I guess I have given you all the information in order to calculate the band structure using BRA and quantum espresso I hope I didn't miss anything and I hope that you guys learned something from it and enjoyed this video in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this that's it thanks for watching and have a great day And one more thing guys, um, I'm really sorry but I think I made a mistake. Um, we should have, you know, used crystal units here because I was using crystal units from here. So I made a mistake and, you know, just let it stay at 2 pi by A. But it should have been, you know, crystal units. So you can, you know, run this calculation once again and see if this makes any difference. Well, sorry.